So far, we've been working with text as a whole, like whole paragraphs, whole sentences, and manipulating that text either on a path or within a confined space. Now we're going to break text into outlines and adjust the shape of the individual text. This can be fantastic when you're working with, let's say, a logo or a title, and you have fonts that you're looking through, and you like certain fonts, they're pretty good, but they're not exactly what you want, but they're almost there. So in that case, you can take the text, you can break that text into shapes, and then you can make those little changes that you need in order to make the text do exactly what you want. So to do that, I'm going to take the type tool, I'm just gonna tap, and I'm gonna call this logo text. We're gonna make it large. There we go. And then we're gonna to go to type, create outlines. And now it looks like the text box shrank a little bit, but otherwise it doesn't look like anything changed. So if I click off and then I click back on, it's the same thing. It looks like it didn't really do anything. So this is very similar to the Pathfinder where when you set it to do the create outlines, you're able to manipulate the text individually, but it did automatically group the text together. So we don't want that. Kind of like the Pathfinder, we don't usually want it to be grouped together. So we're gonna to go to Object Ungroup, and then I'm gonna click off, and then I'm gonna click back on. And now I can click on the individual text. So if I wanted to stagger, let's say put the O right on top, or have them loop into each other, I could do that. Now that being said, and this is totally fine, but we, let's say you want to make the edges of the T look a little different, or the edges of the O look a little different, or the G do something a little different. We can actually take the direct selection tool, and we can zoom in, and I can actually grab the edges. And I can do things. Let's say I can take this, and I can move it out. Take this, move it out. I can go and take the anchor point tool and I can give this handles. Bring it in. I can do anything that I want to this text. It is now no longer text. They are shapes, they're graphics. And you can do anything to them that you would have done to any other graphic in this software. And when I click inside, you can see those little, that little target that allows me to round corners if I wanted to do that. Did it to the bottom as well. I could take the G and I don't know, connect it to the L for anybody who'd want to ever do that. Maybe in a way that doesn't look hideous. Let's extend this. Extend this. And I can add more points. Now, there is one thing we need to consider when we're doing this. And that is the fact that this is no longer text, it is now a shape. And because it's no longer text and it's now a shape, we can no longer change what the text says and we can no longer change the font. So, my recommendation. One, make sure everything's spelled right <laughs> and that it is the finalized text. Another thing is I would generally keep a copy of the original text so that you know the font, or at least write down what font you used. Because you may have a client and, oh yes, this is their logo and you know, you're, you have, once the logo's done, it's done and they're happy with it. But they may want you to make, let's say, a brochure or a website for them in the future and they'd really like you to use the same font for all of your text or try to do something like this with all of your text that is for that project. And if you go and do that, that's great, but if you don't know what font you used, it could have been years since you worked on this project, or it even could have been a week and you could have just forgot what font you used. And you could have hundreds of fonts, and you could have adjusted this so much that you're not really able to tell just by looking at it which font you'd used. So often what I would do then is just kind of put the text on the side, put in the name of the font, anything that you can do, copy and paste the font into your client's file, like the folder if you keep track, you know, folders per clients per project. That's something that I like to do. 
And then if there's any particular fonts used, I'll copy it in there. Anything that helps you track it. Because again, if I go to select it, this is no longer, it's no longer text, just graphics. Um, again, I can do anything with this. So if I wanted to combine these all into one thing, I can go and grab the Pathfinder and I can combine. And now they're all combined together. Again, anything that you would ever do, I don't know if I would generally recommend that because it makes it a little harder to manipulate. But you can do it. And you can do anything with this that you would have done with any illustration ever. It's a really nice feature for your text here in Illustrator because then you can start with a font that you like. You don't have to hand make your text unless you want to. And if you don't, you could just use your font. You can find the closest. Like, okay, this is kind of what I'm looking for. You can experiment with it. Or if you have a final idea, you can have something between, let's say, your sketch and a font that's close to it, place it on top, make adjustments. It's just a really cool feature with Illustrator. And you can also just use it to manipulate the text however you, know, however you see fit. Lots of changes. So that is the creating outline features in Illustrator for manipulating your individual text.